Hey everybody, good to see you and uh, be with you today. And I was out trimming some horses today and actually going over some scripture as I was trimming horses' feet, uh, which is kind of neat to be able to do that. But I've never tried to memorize a lot of Bible scripture just, you know, by reading it, going over it occasionally, you know, you, you remember parts. And then other things remind you of other stuff and it comes to mind. But I thought, well, I'll practice and learn, see if I can actually learn more. And there was a couple of guys I saw on the, the YouTube that did some Bible memorization. So uh, one guy, he put things basically in boxes, five boxes across, four down. And I like that idea. I thought that was a great idea. And then um, just some other people had different things. And then basically you put the first letter of each word um, for that scripture in the box. So I did that in this way, but I added my own type of numbers to it and some other symbols that I used to kind of help me remember it. So I thought I'd give that a try with Galatians chapter three. So why don't we just go over that chapter and I should probably be able to do it pretty well. I did the whole thing this morning while I'm trimming a horse's hoof. Um, but man, there's so many people here, a lot of distractions going on, but I'll, I'll give it a try. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it is indeed in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? All right, so that's the first five. Now I can go to uh, number six. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore knowing that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. All right, so that's number 10. So let's go to 11 but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. All right now that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith all right now that is that would be um, number 14 and then 15 oh brethren I speak in the manner of men Let's see. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, yet if it is confirmed, no one can annul or add to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. It does not say and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. And this I say that the law, which was 430 years later, 
cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the for for if the inheritance is of the law it's no longer a faith but God gave it to Abraham by faith. All right, so that was Let's see, that was 5, 10, 15. That was number, verse 18, verse 19. Okay, verse 19. Oh, come on. That's an, it's an easy one. Uh, what purpose then does the law serve? What purpose then does the law serve? Well, it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. All right. Praise God. We got there 5, 10, 15, 20. Now let's go to verse 21. Verse 21. Let's see. Verse 21. Uh, oh, come on. I, I know this. Verse 21, and this I say, no, well, okay, I will, so I don't, I could remember it if I took a little time, but I'm just going to cheat, look at my little cheat sheet. Is then the law against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if, um, for... If there had been a law given, which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But, uh, okay, come on. But, the law is not of faith. Well, I better cheat again. Oh, no. But the scripture has, but the scripture has confined everyone under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might get, be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard of the law, kept for the faith that would later be revealed, that would afterwards be revealed. Therefore, we were, let's see, therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were, let's see, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's no longer, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All right, praise God. That's not bad, huh? That's not bad to remember that much scripture. Um, and because of time, I glanced at my little cheat sheet here. So I keep it in plastic, and then what I do is I fold it in half. And so, uh, like I said, each block, put one scripture in a block. Basically, the... Um, first letter of each section and I'll, I'll use symbols so you'll use whatever you want but I try to make it around eight words or less in a line and then you might remember just two scriptures and then another two and one and then you'll have the whole row and then just continue and then do another row 
but it's kind of nice when you fold it in half that way you're only focused on some and then um, you'll notice certain patterns that will help you so what you'll have to do is you'll do a few and then review and then you'll learn a couple more and then you'll review but I think it takes review because I don't have a great memory I don't you know there's a lot of times I might not remember some simple things but if you work at it actually work at it and try then you can remember more and I think it's great to well for me it has taken I don't know how long it's taken me to do this but I put in some time with it carry it with me that way I can uh, pick it up and look at it be helped and continue in it so let me see what else can we say about it so I made myself like Bible memory shortcuts now you could just draw it by hand and put all these now there's something about I have symbols for the numbers so like you'll see number one I have a needle or I also think of an all well actually we should start at zero because zero I think of a line so I draw a rope um, so I can think of cordage, a rope, you know when you work with house, horses or animals you use a rope and so you can rope around something. Uh, but I think of God how he is from the beginning uh, like that big circle from the beginning but he's also a line so he has a line from the beginning that stretches clear to the end and then a one as a needle or an awl you gotta poke a hole through something in order to stick your needle through with your thread and then two I think of uh, like two fingers two brothers that drank from the nursed from the same breast or of the same heart or of the spirit two brothers or I think of a file that has two sides or actually tweezers that has two sides that come together too so I think of those the reason I think of a file also is because seven is like a hatchet or an axe all right, so number three, I think of a, a teepee. I actually lived in a teepee. I love living in a teepee. Uh, I would love, no, you don't need much. Abraham lived in tents. You know, people have a lot. We don't need that much, really. Uh, and this is not our, not our permanent home, but God will make this our permanent home later. But I think of a teepee poles. I think of the three crosses, like with Jesus at the cross. I think of a temple and how God made you precious stones as a temple of God so he could dwell directly in you number four I think of a tarp or a covering with four sides number five I think of magnified power like a magnifying glass a hand holding it and that magnification can cause a fire and you know every nation in this world will be burned they will be broken they will fall I don't care what nation it is I don't care if it's an Indian nation I don't care if it's a nation like America, Israel, China, Mexico, it doesn't matter. Every nation will fall, but the kingdom of God will go forever. Okay, so that's five. Number six, I think of a shovel. You know, you're working that soil and a shovel, and there's uh, you've got faith of God, there's work to be done too. And so a shovel uh, uh, in working. And uh, let's see, seven, like I said, a um, a hatchet or an axe and you know like like uh, Jesus said and also John the Baptist that the axe is at the root of the tree already so that one who's coming Jesus Christ who came he was the one you needed to turn to you got to be a tree that's got fruit otherwise it's cut down you know the only tree that Jesus cursed was the fig tree and that was a representative of um, Israel and so it was coming an end of that Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed 40 years after Jesus so when Christ came you've got to be in Jesus Christ to be saved he is a true vine Israel was looked at as a vine before but now the true vine Jesus Christ the Messiah has come that you have to be in Christ to be saved so no nation I don't care if it is a nation of Israel or America or any other nation um, Iran it doesn't matter we need to turn to Jesus Christ because the problem is sin everybody's got a sin problem um, and when Jesus came he laid down his life 
to take all of our sin upon himself so it could be wiped out. So if you believe Jesus died for your sins and is risen, turn to him, repent. Believe and then repent means turn back to him. Now, even a horse can do wrong. You know, when you're working with a horse, they can do wrong. But we're not going to beat the horse. We're going to help it to do what's right. God will help you. All right, so number seven. Number eight, I think of a water droplet or a river. So, you know, you have the teepee above it or the temple and then the water. Well, you can think of the temple and a river flowing from it. Well, so Christ made you a temple. That's what Abraham was looking forward to. A temple not made by hands of man, but made by God himself. So you are the precious stones as the temple that God built. And the river that flows from it is the Holy Spirit that comes from God. Then it goes to the rest of the world to where it's all dry and arid, where there's no life. But God is bringing life by the Holy Spirit out to the whole world. And that's why he calls you that have turned to him a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people of God. And just like we looked at in Galatians, the sons of God are those by faith, not by the law. This is what Abraham was looking forward to. Abraham was 500 years before the law, before Moses. So he was a man picked out of the world to go by faith. And then the law, like, like we were shown in Galatians, it's a tutor uh, because of transgressions until the faith would come. All right, so number eight. Number nine, I think of a knife or a blade. And you know the sword comes out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, uh, the Word of God, sharper than a two-edged sword that strikes right to the heart, cuts to the heart, right? So when people are cut by the heart of the truth, you had some that would turn and repent and be saved, like when Peter was preaching in the book of Acts there. And then that was in like Acts chapter 3, you know, two and three, you see this stuff going on by the Holy Spirit. But then you see in Acts chapter seven, you see Stephen, he's speaking the truth and people are cut to the heart, but what do they do? They turn to being murderers, where Stephen told him, you always pick up the temple of Moloch, that was a sacrifice of children. And what else did he say? You always worship the star of your God, Rempham. So they worship a star and the sacrifice of children. But look, Jesus sacrificed his life for all lives throughout this whole world. Uh, God, um, God is love. We abide in him. Draw near to him. He'll draw near to you. So then 10, you put the needle and the rope together. And so 20, you would put the two or the file, whatever, how you want to remember it, and the rope together, 20. So that's how I do that. So I hope that's a blessing to you for you to um, uh, try to memorize scripture. So wouldn't it be better to get the kids off of the phones, off the internet, and if they were memorizing scripture and they could encourage others and we can be meditating on the scripture. Now I'm guilty for getting on the internet a lot too. I'll listen to a lot of things also, but it is really good to focus on the word of God. That's what we're told to do, to meditate on it. So we're not doing an empty meditation of emptying yourself like the world does. Heck, I did that before I turned to Jesus Christ. But now to know the truth, where Jesus is showing us what the truth is, that we can turn to him. Praise God. So, so here's how I printed out a blank one. And then what you could do is write in the scripture like that. And... Uh, then I didn't realize there was going to be so many people here today. So it's a good thing I had some Daniels. I'll show you this. Um, so I write out Daniel. And then on the back I put chapter 11. So what's neat about Daniel is he was showing when the Christ was coming. So Daniel is focused on Jesus Christ, the stone that would strike the nations right at the time of Rome. And so it's kind of neat where, yeah, right at the time of Rome. And so on the back with chapter 11, all these battles, it is kind of neat that you have where Cleopatra, the queen of Egypt, and you had Mark Anthony that was with her, but they went up uh, left of Turkey 
in, in the islands there, and they had a great battle against Rome. There was over 700 ships involved in that. Well, they saw they were losing, so they snuck through ships and went down south. Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. They lost the battle. Well, Rome became a great empire. Octavian, who is, then is called Caesar Augustus, is deified. So that Roman Empire, 30 years before Christ, and then um, that's when the Christ was going to come in 30 years later. Uh, too bad Cleopatra and Mark Anthony killed herself. It don't matter what you have in this world. You could have a whole kingdom, but none of it's worth it. It's all going to go and be destroyed eventually. Only the kingdom of God. So it wouldn't have been great if Cleopatra and Mark Anthony could have just, you know, whatever they need to do, surrender, but looking forward to that Christ. But I wonder, is anybody going to share the gospel with people? We got to share the gospel. So, yeah, I passed out about, I don't know, 50 of these right here through this event. There's a lot of uh, people in the park here. And so I just encourage people. I've been praying for parents that they would be able to teach their kids, their self. Because sometimes even in churches, pastors can get off, but Jesus never gets off. And parents are the shepherds for their, their children. And the shepherds should be looking out for the sheep, right? <clears throat> Not leading the, sh the sheep astray because uh, that happens in the world. I mean, Paul is, re is warning us about it right from the beginning. So the same things they went through, we can go through the same things also. So God bless you. I hope that was uh, great for you. So we're going to continue in the Lord. We got one big family. I met people here from Jamaica. I met people here from um, Mexico and uh, other countries and uh, people from all over. But wherever you are in Christ, Jesus, we are one family in Him. And to grow in those things, to be faithful, no matter what happens in this world. We got many brothers and sisters that are being devastated and killed throughout the world. Even in Gaza, many Christians are being destroyed right now, along with the Muslims. I met another Muslim man here that we were able to talk uh, we were able to be in peace with each other I shared with him and Daniel because I know the Muslims um, they also know the prophets so if you know the prophets well you can see what they were saying about Jesus because Jesus wants the truth shared uh, with everybody he said go share the good news of the kingdom of God so they can know the truth and the truth would set them free all right well God bless you um, we'll just continue in Jesus Christ, and when he comes back, he will say, Well done, good and faithful servants. Enter the joy of your Lord. All right, I love you. Jesus loves us more than anything, and he will help us when we need help. So, all right, God bless you in the name of Jesus.